Despite being lauded for being the inferior of the Gunpower Age Total War games, Napoleon will always hold a special place in my heart. This will be a review of Napoleon Total War, a game which came out over 10 years ago and jeez does that feel weird to say. We'll cover the campaign, the battles, and if that sounds good to you, I hope you leave a like, a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. And now, Napoleon Total War. My enemies are many, my equals are none. In the shade of olive trees, they said Italy could never be conquered. Gosh, I love that intro. I think it just might be my favorite Total War intro of all time. I loved it so much I used it during a presentation in my high school French class and never looked back. It really encapsulates exactly what this game is about. A chance for Napoleon, son of Carlo Bonaparte, to show his quality. And yes, Napoleon was actually born in Italian-owned Corsica. How come all of these dictators are born outside the country they ended up leading to war, huh? I think the intro says something about the game as a whole as well. It's to the point and concise, showing us exactly where Napoleon's biggest battles took place. Italy, Egypt, Russia, these all symbolize iconic and history alternative periods of the Napoleonic Wars, and we get to play them all in this game. However, there is a cavity, and we'll go over each of the campaigns in turn and order right now. Napoleon Total War offers three different campaigns, four if you count the post-launch Peninsula campaign, and they're all uniquely linear in that you're kind of meant to play them all in order. The first is the Italian campaign during Napoleon's early days. The Italian campaign takes place on a large map of northern and central Italy. This is when Napoleon truly proved themselves as a masterful commander, and you'll see why in this campaign. Remember, this is a time when France waged war against almost the entirety of Europe, and had just emerged from a massive revolution. Our main enemy in Italy is actually Austria, the empire controlling much of northern Italy during this time period. But smaller states remain here as well, like the Papal States, Venice, and Piedmont Sardinia. I think the Italian campaign is a good starting point, and it's indeed the campaign new players will encounter first. It's not too difficult, puts the player in a familiar setting, and it feels really good to kick some Austrian ass. But after completing it once, I've never actually finished it again, and why that is will be discussed later. The second campaign, and this is when things start to get really interesting, is the Egyptian campaign. But before we get into this, I want to talk about the graphics of this game, because the feel of the Egyptian campaign really hinges on this aspect. A major thing with Napoleon is that it took almost everything it has from Empire, its mommy, so to speak. I love Empire, but there's no denying that the game was and continues to be unpolished. The visuals specifically felt somewhat raw in Empire, even though they're pleasing and kinda timeless. Moving back to Napoleon, everything from anti-aliasing to nature and unit models just look and feel so much more polished. I especially love one thing about Napoleon's visuals, and I'm talking about the haze effects, and the subtle depth of field effects coupled with the grass and other natural clutter that appears on screen. Even the smoke and gunfire effects are improved, and combined, Napoleon's subtle enhancements make such a massive difference that I'm still wowed by them to this day. And in many ways, Napoleon might actually be the most beautiful Total War game out there when it comes to clarity, polish, and timelessness. Returning to Egypt then, these haste effects really show us what they're worth. I absolutely love playing in Egypt because of the ancient sands that feel so much more ancient because of the beautiful sun, haze, and depth of field effects. Creative Assembly managed to create an image that feels really unique depending on where in the world you're fighting, and that is a wonderful achievement. Other than the visual side, the Egyptian campaign pits France mostly against the Ottoman Empire, even though you'll also find Mamluks, Bedouins, and of course, the British lurking around the map. It's a slightly more difficult campaign than the Italian one, but if you keep vigilant, use your armies to effect and don't act too carelessly, your troops should fairly easily take down the Ottoman troops by virtue of quality alone. The Egyptian campaign is by and large special for its location. Nowhere else in this game will you find terrain or geography like the ones in the Egyptian campaign, and that's a big shame. Because other than this factor, there really isn't all that much to differentiate between this and the Italian campaign. Just like in Italy, Napoleon in Egypt will periodically get missions or special events will pop up that gives you various bonuses, but there isn't much else in terms of immersive events or mechanics. 
And this brings us, finally, to the main event of this game, the European campaign. This is likely where you'll spend the vast majority of your time, especially due to the possibility of playing as the other major powers here as well, including Great Britain, Prussia, Austria and Russia. But France is of course the star, and Napoleon with it. This is where we really get to prove our mettle, as France finds herself outnumbered and outgunned. To the north, the British flares its navy off the coast of Normandy and poses an everlasting threat of invasion. In the east, both Austria and Russia await ready to march to the west. Prussia is sure to join them soon enough, and who knows who else might eye you as a target. This is the first and only campaign in the game where diplomacy is a viable option to move forward, partially because this is the only campaign with more than a handful of factions. What I love about the European campaign is how it really shows how Creative Assembly took a good, hard look at Empire and thought, you know what, we can do better. Remember, this was before the time of Total War offering massive maps like in Rome 2 and Attila. Taking that into account, Napoleon's Europe is as grand as ever, and we finally have a Europe filled with cities both large and small, including the system of smaller towns serving their own unique purpose as farms, workshops or merchant houses. The city models no longer look like Legos, and even the soundtrack has been updated, now actually playing tracks I love listening to years later. Gameplay-wise, Napoleon has inherited virtually all of Empire systems and mechanics. We have trade nodes visible on the map, where you can send merchant ships to get filthy rich, we have a government window with ministers that will factor in on various parts of your state, a similar technology system based on universities and gentlemen, and we have the same two-type city system of economic and military towns. Even though Napoleon has more direction than Empire, in terms of missions and events related to what Napoleon does, it's nowhere near as encompassing as in later games. It does feel nice to see them when they're there though, and the art style and paintings in the event windows are fantastic. So let's talk about what most people hate about Napoleon, especially when compared to Empire. If Empire had one thing going for it, it was its globe-spanning scope. You could play in Europe, North America, and even India, and even though the landmass itself was small, the sheer scope of it in some sense made up for the one province France. Napoleon is different, focusing solely on Europe, and I mean solely. What I find disastrous in Napoleon is the lack of a Middle East, and especially the lack of Egypt and North Africa. Sure, the main Napoleonic Wars did not take place as much there as in Germany, but I still want to play there. And that's what Total War is about, isn't it? And having those areas would bring so much more to the colonial game as well, and make it so much more fun to play as the Ottomans and trying to do what they failed to do outside the walls of Vienna a few centuries prior. Imagine having a separate Atlantic or North American theater even, where naval battles were important to the control of overseas trade routes and colonies. Empire's scope with Napoleon's detailed landmass would have been a perfect game, but sadly, we only ever had one or the other. I personally don't think it's as much of a game breaker as some do, but I will say that I probably would have played Napoleon 10 times as much if it was larger in scope. I would even be fine with cutting the Italian and Egyptian campaign if it meant having a larger main campaign scope. It's kind of like if the Attila campaign had large swaths of land missing because separate campaigns covered them, and that would have seriously hampered the experience, I think. Like we touched upon earlier, Europe is where you actually get to play as members of the coalition. They all pose various challenges, but I will say that my favorite non-French factions are probably either Great Britain or Russia, and this is because they either play quite differently or are located in very different parts of the world. Great Britain is obviously an island, relying for the most part on their navy to keep them safe from French invasion. Russia, on the other hand, is so far away that it's crazy, but the snowy environment and the possible challenge of a war with the Ottomans keeps the experience fresh. And now let's move on to the final campaign, the Peninsular Campaign. Now this is a campaign I actually didn't really play until recently, but my friend in the comments, LS, recommended I try it, so I did. And you know, it's actually a top-notch Napoleon experience. Like the other side campaigns, it's focused on a singular location with few factions. This time we're in Iberia, with a massive France fighting against a Spanish uprising and the British and Portuguese allies. What's fun with this campaign is that it really changes up the formula. Instead of starting small, France is now the dominant power, and the coalition only controls a few provinces in the southwest. The catch though is that France is dealing with massive unrest, while the coalition can mostly move about as they wish. This creates a scenario not unlike a certain Western Roman Empire experience, although I will say the Peninsular Campaign could have been harder. On the highest difficulty you'll face a challenge for sure, 
but I think it could have offered more unique events and ways for the Spanish uprising to make life a lot more difficult. That being said, I love how it forces you to focus and develop certain provinces in order to create a foundation for future expansion as France, especially if you lose portions of Spain to unrest or invasion. And those were all of Napoleon's campaigns. And let me put it like this. I think they're all good in their own way, with some much better than others of course. However, my biggest wish is that we would have gotten a European campaign, with regions being the size they are in each of the individual size campaigns, including overseas territories. That would have been awesome, and maybe we'll get to see something like it in the future. I would have also loved more ways to interact with our government, economy, and society. But for now, let's turn to the battles, and see what's really ticking underneath the campaign. As is the case with the rest of the game, Napoleon's battles are almost identical to the ones in Empire. Again though, we have infinitely more polish. The battles look and feel amazing, and the sounds of the battlefield especially turn the immersion up to 11. The rank and file warfare is excellently portrayed, and I will never get sick of seeing my nation's flag being carried into battle. The animations as well are mostly fantastic, and virtually every bug from Empire is gone, with units moving and behaving a lot more natural, even though some daredevils will scale their defensive barricades for some god-awful reason. The combination of rifles and cannons is powerful, but even though bullets dominate, you do well to never underestimate the power of flanking shock cavalry as they can easily turn the tides of battle by forcing enemy units to rout. Both the short and long range fighting creates a highly dynamic field, and makes it possible to outsmart a larger enemy force by using the right tactics. The AI could have been better though, and that is probably the one thing from Empire that, although better, has remained, let's just say a work in progress that never got finished. Lastly, I think the city battles are so uninspired and copy pasted from Empire that it's honestly really bad and even fighting in the game's largest cities will only make you feel like you're fighting in some random village. We of course also have naval battles, arguably the best in the series tied with Fall of the Samurai. The ships look and feel better this time, and again, the battles have been polished and given that extra oomph since Empire. I love seeing a ship open a delicious volley, and long range ship warfare is definitely the best type of naval warfare you'll find in Total War. Sadly, because of the campaign's scope, there's never a lot of water around. This is perhaps one of the biggest downsides of having no North Africa and Middle Eastern landmass, because the vital Mediterranean is made almost completely irrelevant. That's not even mentioning the Atlantic and overseas territories. In this sense, naval warfare is much less important and almost completely absent unless you're playing as France or Britain. Napoleon Total War is one of the most polished Total War games ever. It looks, runs, and feels so much better than Empire, and is a much more focused experience. Its maps are larger, but every campaign feels like part of something bigger, except for the Europe campaign which is as close to a grand campaign as we get in this game. What it lacks though, is a campaign map that really includes everything this time period offers, even the parts that weren't necessarily in the center of the conflict. I would have loved more map, more regions, and a bigger scope in an expanding Napoleonic grand campaign, preferably with even deeper mechanics that went beyond those of Empire. I will say I love that we still have a population mechanic and a government system though, and seeing how Napoleon came out before CA's big turn towards more unique and deep mechanics with Attila and beyond, Napoleon's mechanics were quite alright for its time. I also miss a hot seat function, but Napoleon tried to make up for that with the very first full implementation of a 2 player online campaign, which remains fun to this day. Napoleon is one of the Total Wars I love the most, because of everything it did right and improved but ironically one of the historical Total Wars I've played the least because of a lack in scope and new mechanics from a previous title. In many ways, it's Empire Plus, but also Empire Minus at the same time. I would highly recommend Napoleon Total War all these years later, especially now that most hardware can play it with high frame rates on max out graphics settings. Thank you so much for watching. That was Napoleon Total War, and even though it's a great game, I would absolutely love an Empire 2 or another Napoleonic game which implemented every lesson CA has learned since. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like, a comment with your thoughts, and considered subscribing to the channel. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. 
Now they say nothing. They fear me. Like a force of nature, a dealer in thunder and death. I say, I am Napoleon. I am Emperor. Cheers.